Hi, I'm Sue with Woman of Noble Character. I'd like to share with you a little bit about the shocking story of Tamar in the Bible and the six lessons we can learn from her. The story of Tamar appears in Genesis. Tamar is Judah's daughter-in-law. Judah believes that Tamar has killed two of his sons and leverages the law so that she cannot remarry. However, she deceives Judah into getting her pregnant and secures her place in the family. She bears Judah two sons. Her story is one of dedication and loyalty and being willing to go against the grain. We know that the Bible is filled with many different unique stories, but really this one takes the cake. In Genesis 38, we find ourselves tuned into an absolutely bizarre narrative of one of Joseph's brothers and his daughter-in-law. In the story, Judah, the fourth son of Jacob, had left his family and married a Canaanite woman named Shua. When their oldest son, Ur, came of age, Judah and Shua found him a wife named Tamar. However, according to scripture, Ur was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord put him to death. This made Tamar a widow. Now, the leveret marriage was a common practice in ancient times. The brother-in-law would be required to father an heir with his sibling's widow so that he could carry their name and ensure an inheritance for them after they died. This became Omar's responsibility. Although Onan took Tamar as his wife, he refused to let any children come of the marriage because he felt they would not be his own. Onan, however, would make his decisions based on greed. According to inheritance customs, the estate of Judah with three sons would be divided into four equal parts, with the eldest son inheriting one half and the other sons one fourth each. A child born for Ur would inherit at least one fourth and possibly one half as he would be the son of the firstborn. If Ur remained childless, Judah's estate would be divided into three with the eldest, most probably Onan, inheriting two-thirds. So instead of conceiving a child with Tamar, Onan would waste his seed on the ground to not give offspring to his brother. It was a disgusting act that displeased the Lord, and so he put him to death also. But Onan knew that the offspring would not be his. So whenever he went to his brother's wife's bedroom, he would waste the semen on the ground, as I just described. So now, widowed twice, Tamar was without children and alone. And that's when the story gets crazy. I pray you'll check out the accompanying blog post to this video, learn more about this shocking story, and some surprising lessons we can learn from Tamar in the Bible. In the meantime, have a beautiful, blessed day.